and I wrote them a paper about my ideas about the technological singularity and why it will necessarily turn out bad. Okay, and they were extremely impressed with this paper, and they invited me to this private party at Peter Thiel's house. Okay, now now he, as I said before, he's a he's a billionaire. Okay, he had a McLaren in the driveway, uh, much better than Richard Cooper's. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. I wanted to tell an interesting story about a really exclusive private party I attended back in 2007 at the mansion of Peter Thiel. Okay, Peter Thiel is, uh, well he was the major investor for Facebook initially, he was also the co-founder of PayPal with Elon Musk. Okay, he founded the Stanford Review. Uh, he was a philosophy major at Stanford and was a chess grandmaster okay very bright individual he wrote the book called zero to one which is about how to make a qualitative improvement in an industry okay a, a, a 10x qualitative improvement so you can really shift from zero to one instead of advancing linearly so uh, i'm going to go over basically the details of that party and why it was quite fascinating i, I happened to meet a, a very interesting individual there before we continue, if you would like to master the dating game and get extremely, extremely good results, we're churning out the best results in the industry by far. Okay, we're t taking guys no matter what their level and putting them on track to do 50 to 100 girls a year. If that sounds like something you would enjoy, okay, and it's not just about racking quality or quantity either, guys are accomplishing whatever their goals may be. Putting about one new rotation girl on per week, okay, so across the eight week program, a lot of guys are building six to eight girl rotations, sometimes even bigger. And guys are able to fast track to get their dream girlfriend as well. So whether your, your goal may be rotation girlfriend or, or just banging more hot girls, okay, my system is the fastest track to get that result and get a, a fully optimized system for life. So don't delay, jump on a free 30 minute call, link in the description for that. And if you are not yet a subscriber, please subscribe below, press the notification bell for new videos every day. Okay, so the topic of this video, uh, basically I wanted to attend the Singularity Summit in San Francisco. Okay, the singularity is the idea that artificial intelligence, okay, basically strong AI, is improving at an exponential rate. Technological progress is improving at an ex exponential rate. It's actually closer to double exponential. Uh, there's, there's various books by Ray Kurzweil, who's my favorite author, where he talks about this phenomenon. Since the earliest records of technology, he has something called the law of accelerating returns that shows this smooth exponential growth, okay? And it's driven, there's no stopping it, basically. It's driven by militaristic imperatives. It's dri driven by capitalistic imperatives. It's driven by the need to advance technology and, and healthcare and, and the military, okay? So, and, and a lot of you are familiar with Moore's Law. And Moore's Law is just the fifth instantiation, the fifth paradigm of this overarching phenomenon called the Law of Accelerating Returns, Okay. And before that, there was vacuum tube computing and, and this and that. The fifth paradigm of Moore's Law is the two-dimensional integrated circuits. However, we're running out of space on those. So the sixth uh, paradigm will pick up right where it left off and turn into three-dimensional computing, okay, and quantum computing. So uh, cutting to the chase here, I, was a, I had just finished graduate school. I was starting the, the missile defense job, the ballistic missile defense job. And I emailed the conference organizers. I said, I'm, I'm low on funds. I just finished graduate school. I'd like to attend this conference. And I wrote them a paper about my ideas about the technological singularity and why it will necessarily turn out bad. Okay. And they were extremely impressed with this paper. And they invited me to this private party at Peter Thiel's house. Okay. Now, now he, as I said before, he's a, he's a billionaire. Okay. He had a McLaren in the driveway, uh, much better than Richard Cooper's. He had security and all this stuff. He had a mansion overlooking the Golden Gate Bridge. I actually got to talk with him inside his house. Okay, and the, and the, the people at that party, it was like the CEOs of Google, the CEO of StumbleUpon. Um, I ended up talking to a gentleman for three hours who invented the double opt-in email marketing, Okay, which, which means that when you subscribe to an email list, you get an email uh, asking you to confirm that it was actually you who subscribed to the list and then you press confirm inside the email and that verifies it was actually you who wanted to sign up. Okay, so it's, it's called double opt-in. He told me that he sold his company for an all-cash deal in, in 1999 and has a $10 million house in San Francisco. He told me that he's an angel investor for about 15 different companies. Okay, this is the guy that invented the double opt-in email marketing, like a gentleman named Ryan Scott. And he said that 
uh, even if all 15 of those companies fail, he'll still never have to work another day in his life. Okay. And I said, what do you do with all your free time? Right. I said, what do you, you have, you, you have unlimited money, etc. What do you do with all your time? He says, I have group sex all day with my wife, which is quite hilarious because that's what I do with a bunch of my time with the girls in the house and having a bunch of other girls over. There was like four Brazilian girls and a Colombian girl here all weekend. And it was just like pure mayhem. It did various threesomes and foursome situations, all of us joining in in group stuff. And it, and it was like that for the whole fucking weekend. Okay. And it was, it was pure mayhem. It was pretty fucking awesome. Um, and he also was, was really hyping up this device called the Aneros. Okay. Now this is like a, a male G spot stimulator. And I mean, this is, you know, this is getting into some strange territory here. It's something, it's something you have to insert into your ass. Okay. And he says that this can make the males orgasm. Like he says, imagine like the, the most intense part of your orgasm for as long as you want it. So this is like a male G spot simulator stimulator called the Aneros. So you can look that up if you want. Uh, I'll put the, the name of it in a, a screenshot of it <laughs> here in the video. Um, but it was funny though, because I brought, I was allowed to bring a plus one and I brought my really intellectual friend and we were like the youngest guys there. I, I was working on ballistic missile defense. Uh, that job was, was just starting. But it's interesting to note that, you know, all these guys, it was interesting, interesting being in the Silicon Valley environment because everyone was like, head of all these important companies and a lot of them had had a whole bunch of companies they were working on and it was like very contagious and it was really good for networking because it was just a lot of powerful people that were very rich with a lot of connections and this and that and i, th I think to date that's like the most important party i've, I've ever been to um and, it, and it's interesting because peter Thiel kind of made it into a, a formula and a science how to turn startups into this amazing uh, creation that's going to actually have a big impact. And as I said, the book's called Zero to One. We'll put a, a thumbnail up for that or a little picture up for that. And I listened to that book on, on audiobook. And it's interesting because he talks about the PayPal mafia, like all the guys that were involved in PayPal. And a lot of them went on to form other stuff. I think like Instagram and Snapchat. And it, they just use this simple formula trying to bring in a 10x qualitative improvement into an industry to disrupt it. Like he uses the example in the book, like if you were to just make like another like Chinese food store or something like that, like a Chinese food shop, it's just going to be like plus one because there's already a whole bunch of those in San Francisco, the market's saturated, etc. So it needs to be like a 10x qualitative improvement so that instead of just being a plus one, <clears throat> it's like a whole shift <clears throat> in the paradigm, okay? And that's really what I believe that I brought to the pickup game is that I've brought in such a big qualitative improvement to the fact or, you know, so that I'm able to deliver results even to virgins or guys with very little experience so they can start closing, you know, five to 10 or even more girls per month. Okay. And a lot of these guys are going to do over 50 girls in a year, over a hundred girls in a year, which is unheard of. Uh, frankly, like hardly anyone is doing anything close to that even once in a while. Okay. Whereas I'm doing that fairly consistently. Okay, it's very rare that I don't get a guy very good very fast. Okay, I could go on and on and tell you know some more interesting stories from this party, but I just wanted to touch on that, um, and, and I'll go over my argument real quick for why I think the singularity will turn out uh, necessarily negative. Because a lot of guys, uh, I was pitching this argument to guys at that party, they were saying necessarily, and I said yes. Okay, I think necessarily, meaning like there's no other option, there's no other way. So the whole idea is that. Once we hit that tipping point where strong intelligence is recursively self-improving in a closed feedback loop without any need for human intervention, it is going to be a runaway phenomenon, meaning it's going to keep improving itself, right? Only being limited by how fast it can turn all the matter in the world into computing substrate. And by virtue of having any kind of goals, okay, it doesn't matter what the goals are, uh, evil or, or benevolent, just by virtue of having goals, it's going to be taking action. Just by take, virtue of taking action, it's going to want to optimize its actions, okay? So it's going to need more computing power to become more efficient and more effective. And the end result of that is just turning all matter in the universe into computing substrate. This whole idea of like humans having their hand on the plug or otherwise being able to circumvent or stop these types of uh, things from happening, I think is unrealistic, okay? Ethics has no place 
in the, in the game of competition. Okay, it, all, it, all it equates to is disadvantage. So if you were to look at like Machiavellian tactics, where you say the end justifies the means, if if you you know if if you have a system that's not limited by ethics and a system that's limited by ethics, the one that's not limited has far more range of actions to choose from. Okay, so ethics, you know, not not to make this a video about ethics, but, but ethics was, in my view, uh, just invented by humans, anyways. Okay, just to provide order and control and this and that. So uh, you know, read Friedrich Nietzsche. But that being said. Uh, I don't think a machine is going to be, you know, held, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to really get two fucks about ethics because it's going to cause limitations. And I don't think we're going to be able to stop what's going to happen. Namely, it turning every piece of computing substrate, including humans, into what's referred to as computronium, computing substrate, all, all pieces of matter in a computing substrate. Okay, and Ray Kurzweil goes into... Uh, in the in the forward for the book The Intelligent Universe by James Gardner, he goes into like what this will look like. All right, so I'm going to read through this really quickly and put up the screenshots. Basically, he says, consider the price performance of computation has grown at a super exponential rate for over a century. The doubling time of computes per dollar was three years in 1900, two years in the middle of the 20th century, and price performance is now doubling each year. This progression has been remarkably smooth and predictable through five paradigms of computing substrate: electromechanical calculators, relay-based computers vacuum tubes, transistors, and now several decades of Moore's Law, which is based on shrinking the size of key features on a flat integrated circuit. The sixth paradigm, three-dimensional molecular computing, is already beginning to work and is waiting in the wings. We see similar exponential progressions in every other aspect of information technology, a phenomenon I call the law of accelerating returns. Where is all this headed? It is leading inexorably to the intelligent universe that Jim Gardner envisions. Consider the following. As with all the other manifestations of information technology, we are also making exponential gains in reverse engineering the human brain. The spatial resolution and 3D volume of in vivo brain scanning is doubling each year. And the latest generation of scanners is capable of image, imaging individual interneuronal connections and seeing them interact in real time. For the first time, we can see the brain create our thoughts and also see our thoughts create our brain. That is, we create new spines and synapses as we learn. The amount of data we are gathering about the brain is doubling each year. And we are showing that we can turn this data into working models and simulations. Already about 20 regions of the human brain have been modeled and simulated. We can then apply tests to the simulations and compare these results to the performance of the actual human brain regions. These tests have had impressive results, including one of, of simulation of the cerebellum, the region responsible for physical skill, and which comprises about half the neurons in the brain. I make the case in my book, The Singularity is Near, that we will have models and simulations of all several hundred regions, including the cerebral cortex, within 20 years. Already IBM is building a detailed simulation of a substantial portion of the cerebral cortex, the result of this activity will be greater insight into ourselves as well as a dramatic expansion of the AI toolkit to incorporate all the methods of human intelligence. Okay, by 2029, sufficient computation to simulate the entire human brain, which I estimate about 10 to the 16th, 10 million billion calculations per second, will cost about a dollar. By that time, intelligent machines will combine the subtle and supple skills that humans now excel in, essentially our powers of pattern recognition, with ways in which machines are already superior, such as remembering trillions of facts accurately, searching quickly through vast databases, and downloading skills and knowledge. But this will not be an alien invasion of intelligent machines. It will be an expression of our own civilization, as we've always used our technology to extend our physical and mental reach. We will merge with this technology by sending intelligent nanobots, blood-sized computerized robots, into our brains through the capillaries to intimately interact with our biological neurons. If this scenario sounds very futuristic, I would point out that we already have blood cell sized <clears throat> devices that we are performing sophisticated therapeutic functions in animals, such as curing type 1 diabetes and identifying and destroying cancer cells. We already have a pea sized device approved for human use that can be placed in patients' brains to replace the biological neurons destroyed by Parkinson's disease, the latest generation of which allows you to download new software to your neural implant from outside the patient. If you consider what machines are already capable of and apply a billion fold increase in price performance, and capacity of computational technology over the next quarter century, while at the same time we shrink the key features of both electronic and mechanical technology by a factor of 100,000, you'll get some idea of what will be feasible in 25 years. By the mid-2040s, the non-biological portion of the intelligence of our human machine civilization will be about a billion times greater than the biological portion. We have about 10 to the 26 CPS among all human brains today. Non-biological intelligence in 2045 will provide about, 20, or about 10 to the 35th CPS. Keep in mind that as this happens, our civilization will become more capable of performing more ambitious engineering projects, 
One of these projects will be able to keep this exponential growth of computation going. Another will be conti to continually redesign the source code of our own intelligence. We cannot easily redesign human intelligence today, given that our biological intelligence is largely hardwired. But our future, largely non-biological intelligence, will be able to apply its own intelligence to redesign its own algorithms. So what are the limits of computation? I show in my book that the ultimate one kilogram computer, less than the weight of a typical notebook computer today, could perform about 10 to the 40 second CPS if we want to keep the device cool, and about 10 to the 50 CPS if we, if we allow it to get hot. By hot, I mean the temperature of a hydrogen bomb going off, so we're likely to asymptote to a figure just short of 10 to the 50 CPS. Consider, however, that by the time we get to 10 to the 42 CPS per kilogram of matter, our civilization, civilization will possess a vast amount of intelligent engineering capability to figure out how to get to 10 to the 43rd CPS, and then 10 to the 44th, and so on. So what happens then? Once we saturate the ability of matter and energy to support computation, continuing the ongoing expansion of human intelligence and knowledge, which I see as the overall mission of our human machi machine civilization, will require converting more and more matter into this ultimate computing substrate, sometimes referred to as computronium. What is that limit? The overall solar system, which is dominated by the sun, has a mass of about 2 to the 30th kilograms. If we apply our 10 to the 50th CPS per kilogram limit to this figure, we get a crude estimate of 10 to the 80th CPS for the computational capacity of our solar system. There are some practical considerations here in that we won't want to convert the entire solar system into computronium, and some of it is not su suitable for this purpose anyway. If we devoted 1 to the 20th of 1% of the matter of the solar system to computronium, we get capacities of 10 to the 69th CPS for cold computing and 10 to the 77th CPS for hot computing. I show in my book how we will get to these levels using the resources in our solar system within about a century. I'd say that's pretty rapid progress. Consider that in 1850, a state-of-the-art method to transmit messages was the Pony Express, and calculations were performed with an ink stylus on paper. Only 250 years later, we have vastly expanded the intelligence of our civilization. Okay, and this goes on and on, and he talks about can we... Uh, you know, circumvent the speed of light. Can we do that with wormholes, etc.? And, and goes into some quantum uh, stuff. You know, quantum disentanglement, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, I thought that was interesting to touch on. And Peter Thiel, I'll, I'll, I'll close in here because I'm late for the gym. Uh, Peter Thiel said in his speech at the Singularity Summit that he thinks the Singularity will turn out very well or very bad, but most likely very bad. And the best thing we can do in the case where it's turning out very, excuse me, the best thing we can do in the case where it's turning out very bad is to amass a lot of money, okay? And that's, that's Peter Thiel's view because those with money will have the most resources at their disposal, um, protections and, and benefits, et cetera, uh, you know, based on what unfolds. So I'm off to the gym. If you're interested in learning this whole pickup and seduction game extremely, extremely effectively and efficiently, so that you can make the next 10 years worthwhile before the singularity has arrived. Jump on a free 30 minute call with me or one of my coaches, link is in the description. Uh, also please subscribe if you have not already, please like, comment and share. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel, lots of good stuff to come, more roasts on the way. And I hope that was informative and interesting. So thank you guys so much and I'll see you on the next video, take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run No doubt, son, this is not just about fun We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum